Hello, everyone. Welcome in. Uh, welcome to Tag Family Theater Company's original production of A Man After God's Own Heart. This is a show that we wrote over months and months. Um, it features music that, as far as we know, may have been pieces that David wrote himself based on what we know about how to read Hebrew musical notation that he wrote in the Psalms. So we've tried our best to create a very authentic music, so it might sound a little different than some musicals that you've been to before. We've tried to make the show accurate. A lot of the dialogue is taken directly from scripture and we've had the absolute honor as a cast to memorize scripture while we learn our lines, which is, like I said, an honor. So I hope you guys enjoy the show. Um, it's a lot of fun. We've had a great time learning and putting this on for you guys, so enjoy the show. Rabbi? Yes, please. Yes, please, Rabbi. Now that our pastor is finished, he must tell us a story. Okay, all right, children. All right. But which story would you like to hear? What about killing Philistines? No, Elijah and the oil miracle. I want to hear about Hannah and baby Shamuel. What about David and Goliath? Yitzhak, you always ask for David and Goliath. Hadassah is right, Yitzhak. You do often ask for that story. Tell me, why do you love it so? Because it's the most important part of King David's life. Ah, well, if you think that, my child, I'm afraid you have not been paying attention. <laughs> now, before we begin, do you all remember the storytelling rules? We can't make any recordings. We need to keep anyone and any pet silent. We take a break in the middle to think of more questions, get water, and walk around the marketplace for a while. Now, be rude to distract you. Very good. You all must have done this before. But I believe you're all forgetting the most important rule of all. Oh, of course. We need to pray before beginning a story from the scriptures. Very good, Lydia. Yes. Now we go before the Lord of hosts when we, when we pray, that we may speak to him as if speaking to a friend. Baruch <laughs> Blessed are you, Lord God, King of the universe. I thank you, God, for this opportunity to share this beautiful history with these children. I pray that they would walk away not just knowing more about David, but knowing more about themselves and you. Amen. 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 Rabbi, hmm? what did you mean when you said I wasn't paying attention to King David's story? Well, David's story does not stop being interesting after he de defeats Goliath. Oh, no. It only becomes more and more fascinating as the years go on, and God's hand is abundantly clear throughout. Let's sit down. I believe I do have a story to tell you. It all begins shortly after David defeated Goliath. The prophet Shemuel had already anointed David as future king of Israel, unknown to the current king Shaul. Shaul had invited David into his house to play his harp for the rageful man. All was going well until one day, some people started singing in the streets.
of this accursed singing. Jonathan, why do the people sing for this boy who's killed one man when I have saved them from the rest of the Philistine army? No, I won't stand for this any longer. I bring this man into my home. I give him honor. I thank him for taking down Goliath, and this is how he repays me. By claiming victories, he has not won. What more can they offer him but the kingdom? I'll pin you to the wall. Ah! David, go! Get out of my sight. Get out before I kill you! Father, please, stop, please! You, you think your friendship with that sheep herder will save that treasonous... Father, what has David done to you or I to make him hate you like... to make you hate him like this? Father, your people will forget about him soon enough. Let him be! No, they won't, Jonathan. This man threatens my very kingdom. How can you defend the one that would steal your right to the throne? Father, David is my friend, and you just tried to kill and him. you're defending him again. Yes, I'm defending him. Father, David is the Lord's anointed. How many times have you told me how you were chosen king? You weren't royalty either. Father, if the Lord has chosen David to be king after you, then who are we to question him? You're right. You're right. General Abner, give David command over 1,000 men, and let him lead them into battle. Jonathan, go with Abner, and tell your friend that the king has ordered this. And if the Lord has any pity left for me, David will die on the front lines. But the Lord was with David still. He defeated the armies that he met in battle, much to Shaul's dismay. For the people grew to love him more than Shaul. And so Shaul, hearing of his daughter Michal's love for David, decided to give her to him in marriage, knowing she'd be a thorn in his side all his days, and in doing so, securing his loyalty. But the Lord was still with David? Yes, the Lord was still with David. Every time Shaul sent him up against impossible odds, he returned victorious. So finally, Shaul decided if he was to stop David, he'd have to kill him himself. David, my brother. Jonathan, what is it? David, you look terrified. You need to go. My father, he has plans to kill you. You need to find a place to hide and, and, and stay there. Go to that place where we used to practice archery. Yes, go there. Yes. I will bring my father near and I will talk to him about you. You need to go there and just hide. Go! Yes. Lord, please be with him. Father, may I speak with you openly? Of course, my son. Father, don't do wrong by your servant David. He hasn't wronged you, and what he has done has only helped you. He risked his life by defeating this, the Philistine giant, and since then has only won great victories for Israel. Why would you do wrong by an innocent man by killing him? You're right, Jonathan. Surely as the Lord lives, David will not be put to death. Oh, thank you, Father! David! David, my father, he has sworn not to kill you. Everything can go back to the way it was. I pray you're right, brother.
McCall, McCall, your father, he is very, very angry with me. He means to kill me. He threw a spear at me again. I, what do I do? <laughs> You'll leave tonight. If you don't, he'll kill you in the morning. Yes. I'll make a distraction for the guards here. Quickly. With a... What do I do with the headscarf? Go out the window. What? I don't have time for this. Just go. All right, all right. Oh, wonderful. My husband is a fugitive. Now to save him and get out of this cursed marriage. Where is David, oh. your husband? Oh, gentlemen, he is so very very ill. I'm afraid you can't see him. Where is he? <laughs> Father! David's ill, your majesty. Well, then take me to his sickbed, so I can make sure he doesn't recover! <sighs> Where is he? What have you done, you treasonous? Father! Please, he, he threatened to kill me if I didn't lie to help him. I was so very, very afraid. I would never betray you. Never! You believe me, don't you, Abba? You still love me, don't you? Of course I do, my daughter. We'll catch him soon, I promise. David! David, where are you? I'm here, Jonathan. David, are you alright? Or uh, are you injured? Where have you been? Are you- Jonathan, what have I done? What is my crime? How have I so wronged your father that he would want to kill me? He's going to kill me. Never! David, my father does not do anything big or small without talking to me first. Why would he so hide something like this from me? Because your father is no fool, Jonathan. He knows we're friends, and he knows it would grieve you for him to kill me. But as surely as the Lord lives, and as you live, there is only a step between me and, and, and death. David, tell me what to do, and I'll do it. Tomorrow. Tomorrow is the new moon feast, and I am supposed to go and dine with the king, but let me go and hide in the field. If your father misses me at all, tell him... David asked my permission to hurry home to Bethlehem. If he says very well, then we know that I am safe. But if he loses his temper, then we, you can know then that he is determined to kill me. And as for you, show kindness to me. For you have brought me into a covenant of protection with you before the Lord. But if I am if I'm guilty, then just kill me yourself. Why wait for your Stop! father to... David! Don't you think if I knew a sliver of information about this that I would tell you? How would you tell me what your father would only say when he's alone? David, David, I swear, I swear that tomorrow I will speak with my father. And if he is still favorable to you, I will tell you. And, and if he's not, then if he intends to hurt you, then may the Lord do the same to me if I don't tell you and let you go in peace. David, my brother, 
May the Lord be with you as he has been with my father. But please, may they show my family kindness, like the Lord's kindness. And don't cut off that kindness, even when your enemies are wiped from the face of the earth. I swear it, my brother. I swear it. Tomorrow, you will be missed. And everyone will notice you're gone. In the morning, go and hide where you hid when all of this mess began. Go there, and I will shoot off three arrows to the side of the rock as ill. I will send a servant boy and tell him, if I tell him, look, the arrows are on this side, fetch them and bring them here, then come home. Because as the Lord lives, I promise you are safe. But what if I tell him, look, aren't the arrows beyond you? Then you have to go. Because the Lord has sent you away. And what we've talked about, you will remember. Be safe, my brother.
Please, go fetch the arrows when I'm finished with them. Aren't the arrows beyond you? Go quickly, there isn't much time! Bring them back to the city. Jonathan. Jonathan. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Jonathan. I'm so sorry. Go in peace. May the Lord go between your children and mine forever. I'm afraid so, my daughter. That's sad. It is. God, God's ways are often not our ways. Didn't Shovel keep going after David? Yes, he did. David was forced to run away with his mighty men, including his nephews, Joab, Abishai, and Asham. They ran together all the way to Nob, to the tabernacle there in the house of the Lord. David Ben Yesai. Ahimelech, high priest of our people, I need your help. What can I do for you? My men and I have been traveling through the wilderness and are hungry. Please, if there are just five loaves of bread you could offer us, or whatever is available. There is no ordinary bread on hand, only the holy bread from the Lord's table, but it is only for the priests to eat. My men are hungry. Your men must be holy in order to eat it. My men have touched nothing unclean. Please, High Priest, if, if my men have been holy before this, how much more now for what we are doing? All right, I'll get the showbread. Thank you. Uh, please, if I may ask one more thing. Ask it, my child. Is there a sword or a spear here? I don't have one of my own because I had to leave urgently with my men. The sword of Goliath the Philistine is here, wrapped in cloth and collecting rust. If you want it, you can have it. It's the only one we have. There's none like it. Give it to me. <clears throat> Um, please. <sighs> well... The Lord has been good to us today. He has given us food to eat and Goliath's sword. The one he used to cut the giant's head off. What? I'd like to make apologies for my brother. What? I'm sorry. We are about to eat the holy showbread of the Lord. Please. What are your plans now, David? We've defeated the Philistines at every corner, and the Amalekites. We have. 
From here we move on through Carmel, on our way through Hebron to Ziklag, to our stronghold there. We need to gather supplies, get weapons, all the usual preparations. Ashal, my runner, go ahead and find us a man who will help feed our mighty men. Nabal lives in Carmel. He's the wealthy landowner we stayed with before his sheep shearing season, and I'm sure I'll have a way to help. There should be food to spare. I'll leave now and return with good news for us. And after that? After that, we keep moving. The Lord is delivering his enemies into our hands and not the Saul's. <coughs> so we continue fighting our battles for him. <laughs> What's so funny, Uriah? Oh, uh, you remember that one time when he took his spear? We're, you took his spear, actually. I wish I could have been there to see the look on his face when he woke up. <laughs> uh. I still think you should have let me kill him. Abishai! What? Are you saying you wouldn't have enjoyed killing Saul and then Abner while we're at it? I know you hate him. The leader of Saul's army held in such high regard before the king. Well, I'm a better warrior. Abner's only a general for now. So you would enjoy killing him. I didn't say that. Nephews. I do appreciate your enthusiasm for death on the battlefield, but now isn't the time. We are eating the holy showbread of the Lord. There's more to life than war. Is that why you're always writing, David? One of the reasons. Music is how God speaks to me and how I speak to him. Through my songs, it's like he's speaking to me himself. And I believe he is, with all my heart. <coughs> In fact, I have one here that you may even like to have a shy. Talks of the Lord's strength and how he's a shield in our time of trouble. Hurry, ladies. Any idea the day that I have had? It started with half of the sheep getting out. The other half got out by the time anyone noticed. So I had to spend my whole morning watching people bring in the sheep. You know what I wanted to do? I wanted to sit down and have my dinner. So where is my dinner? It's not ready, is it? No, it's just getting set up. I'd expect my wife to know better. I'll handle it. You better. My Lord Nabal, may you have a long life, and may you be well. And may your household and all that you have be well. And you are? I am here on behalf of your servant, David Ben Jesse. When your shepherds stayed with us in Carmel, we protected them and took nothing from them. You can ask them. David says, please, if we have found favor in your sight, give your servant and your son David whatever you can spare. Surely you have plenty left over from the sheep shearing season. Who is this David Ben Jesse? Am I supposed to care? Many servants are escaping from their masters these days, expecting food without doing any work. And why should I take my bread, my water, and the meat I butchered from my shears and give it to this man who comes from... Who knows where? No. Tell this David he will not be getting any food from me. David, your servant, has only asked for what is left over. It is not his intention to deny your sheep shearers anything. 
Why should I care? Get off my land! My lord! Get off! What is it? I just heard your husband speaking with a servant of David Ben Jesse from the land of Israel. Go on. David's servant only requested food and water for his men. Only what your husband could spare, and he was refused. My lady, my lord Nabal even screamed insults at him. If I may say, they were only kind to us when they were here before. They never harmed us as others have and stole nothing. Your servants have tried to reason with him, but your husband, he's an angry man. I know. And he's a foolish man as well. My lady, what do you want us to do? Pray with me. To David's God, the God of Israel. For David is the man he has chosen to lead his people, and I must plead with him for our lives. loaves of bread, two jars of wine, five dressed sheep, five measures of roasted grain, one hundred raisin cakes and two hundred fig cakes, and put them on the donkeys. Go ahead of me, and I will follow you, and say nothing of this to my husband. Yes, my lady.
It was for nothing that I guarded this wilderness for him then. Nothing! This is how he repays me? May the Lord do the same and worse to me if I let one of his men live. Do not let one of his men live! Yeah. This is how he repays me. My Lord David, let me be to blame for what has happened. Please, my lord, pay no attention to this Nabal, for he is like his name, meaning fool. I, your servant, did not see the man you sent. And now, my lord, as surely as Adonai is living and as you are living, it is the Lord who has held you back from taking revenge into your own hands. Let all your enemies become like Nabal will be. And now, let the gifts that I have brought for my lord be given to the men who are with you. When someone rises up to pursue you and seeks your life, it will be saved by the Lord. He will fling away your enemies like stones from a sling. When Adonai has done for you all he has promised and appoints you king over Israel, you will hold no regret in your heart for shedding the blood of revenge. Praise the God of Israel who has sent you to me. Blessed be your wisdom. Thank you for holding back my hand. Now, go back to your house. I have heard you. I will not kill anyone here today. Thank you, my lord. My lady Abigail, my lord David, Nabal is dead. His heart failed him when he heard about Abigail, his wife, coming to plead for your mercy. You were Nabal's wife. As you heard. You came to me as a servant. Why? A servant is no threat to you, my lord. To say I was the wife of your enemy, the man you intended to kill. Forgive me, my lord, but I am not a fool like my husband. He didn't deserve a woman like you. Did you love him? Would you consider me as your protector? My protector, my lord? I admire you, your wisdom and, and your courage. Not many women would want to take a stand for a man whom she would call a fool. He was a fool, but his men were not. They didn't deserve to die for their crimes, and you didn't deserve to dirty your hands with vengeful blood. And why do you say I don't deserve that? I know the Lord Adonai has chosen you to be the next king over Israel. Many know it, although not all are willing to say it. Revenge is not something fit for a true king to take. You are. My lord. I'm alone, Abigail. My wife left me when I fled from her father, Saul. And your husband has died. Who will protect you out here? Who will you marry? One of your husband's... Shepherds? I will marry a man who is noble, who leads his family and his people with a heart that follows after Adonai all his days. A leader and a kind man. A man who knows when to seek justice and when to show mercy. A man who knows when to lay down his sword and take up his harp. That is the man who is worthy of my heart. Did the man marry Abigail? Yes, he did. They traveled together, always running away from Shalom, always hiding. Didn't they have a chance to kill Shalom once? They did, Azriel. She must have been paying attention. They found Shaul in a cave, and then Abishai suggested that- Trace me into his heart! Very good, Azriel. You remember that part of the story, then? You would remember that part of the story. Children, children, that is no way to treat a friend. Did David kill Shaul? No, they fought many, many battles, though. With Abishai and Job? Yes, with Abishai and Job. 
Did you all get to fight Abner? They fought each other's armies. I wish I could fight in a battle. I don't think you'd say that, my son, if you had seen one. Watch out! Don't do anything <laughs> stupid, Ashal. You can't be Abner. Don't try. I can't? Watch. Ashal! Yeah. Stop! Don't Stay back! I don't want to kill you! Don't worry, you are. Ashal? Ashal! Ashal! Stay with me! Stay with me! Calm down! I'm gonna kill him! Abishai, I can't risk losing you too! And so, then I said to him, Listen here, or I'll cut off your head. How'd you know? It's the same way, Abishai. Do not. Where have you come from? I escaped from Saul's Israelite camp. They're in battle with the Philistines. The battle's lost. What happened? Tell the, me. The men ran. Many of them were killed, and Saul and his son Jonathan are dead. How do you know that Saul and Jonathan are dead? I was there on Mount Gilboa, and there was Saul leaning on his spear, and he called to me and said, Stand here by me and kill me. So I did, because I knew he wouldn't survive his wounds. Here, I brought this bracelet and this jewelry, and I brought it to you, my king. Where are you from? I'm the son of a foreigner, an Amalekite. Why weren't you afraid to lift your hand against the Lord's anointed? Men, strike him down. May your blood be on your own head because you yourself said you killed the Lord's anointed. But David, I, I didn't actually kill him. I just stole his jewelry. It, it's the truth. A dear lies slain on the heights of Israel. How the mighty have fallen. From the blood of the strong, from the strength of the mighty, the bow of Jonathan did not turn back. The sword of Saul did not return unsatisfied. Saul and Jonathan, I grieve for you, Jonathan, my brother. You were very dear to me. How the mighty have fallen. The weapons of war have died. Jonathan. Get up, David, and stop your mourning. You are the true king of Israel. Abner left Saul's army to join ours. I know you never trusted him, but... Abner killed my brother. 
Shaw, your nephew! He knows Saul's men better than we do. They'll follow him where he leads, and I need them in my army. I'm the leader of your army. And that doesn't change. But I need Abner on my side, and I need you to accept that. I don't think you heard me. Abner killed my brother! And I'm sorry for it! I'm sorry your brother ran after him. I'm sorry Abner killed him. Joab, it was a battle in a war. People die in war. I miss him too, Joab. He was your brother and my nephew. Of course I miss him. Of course I regret his death. But Abner is joining our army, and you are going to accept that. Am I clear? Perfectly. But how do you know he's just not to here to spy on your army? You know he's only here to spy on your movements and figure out what you're planning. Joab, you have my orders. Follow them. Abner is far from a perfect man, but I trust him. <laughs> Joab, after I received your letter, I expected to see David here with you. Am I not enough to greet you? No, of course. My apologies for any offense. I brought as much of Saul's army as I can. Thousands of men. And they're waiting for David? Yes. They have orders to wait for his and your command. Good. Wait! <clears throat> That's for killing my brother. David isn't going to like this. David won't do anything about it. I control the rest of his army. He won't risk it. You could have at least let me stab him once. Go back to David. Tell him Abner was stabbed in the streets. We tried to stop it. Of course, my brother. Was David mad at Joab for killing Abner? David was furious. And he should have killed Joab for treason, right? Probably, but Joab was the leader of David's army, and that made things very complicated. You see, David's men liked Joab. If he executed him for treason, they would have put David on shaky ground with his men. And Joab and Adishai were family, weren't they? They were Hadassah, and you're right, that makes it even more complicated. They were his older sister and Zayuai's children. Though they were Close in age. I have a niece who's older than I am by six years. I remember meeting her. Rabbi. Yes? If David was following God, which would be better? To deal justice or to show mercy to his family? It's not a simple answer, is it? And for David, it was even less simple. For he had been chosen to be the new king. See, God rarely ever gives us a simple answer. That's where trust comes in, isn't it, Rabbi? Yes, that's where trust comes in. Trust and faith. Seeking God in His ways, even if the answers aren't what you were looking for, He will guide you through. So, what did David do? He did punish Joab for his crimes. Not as much as Joab deserved, but he did punish him. No! Joab, what have you done? Ugh. My kingdom and I are innocent forever before the Lord for the blood of Abner ben Nur. May his blood be on the head of Joab and his whole family. May there never be anyone in Joab's family who does not have an illness or who walks without a crutch or who dies by the sword for what he has done. Joab! Tear your clothes put on sackcloth, and walk the funeral procession in the streets. And Joab, may the Lord repay the evildoer according to his deeds. Ziba. Ziba, are there any left in the house of Saul? Anyone I may show kindness to for Jonathan's sake? I do not know, my lord. 
Send whoever you can spare and find out for me. I owe it to my brother Jonathan to care for them. I, I made a promise. Yes, ma'am. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. He will cover you with his wings and, no, wings? No, feathers. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. You will not fear the arrow in the night or the terror. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the snare of the hunter and from the deadly plague. He will cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you will find refuge. Yes. So the final preparations were made for the coronation of David as king over all of Israel. Wait, and you're skipping a lot. Oh? I want to hear more about David and Abigail. I want to hear more about the battles David fought against the enemies of the Lord. All you ever want to hear about is more battles. Well, they're interesting. But David and Abigail are adorable together. War is better. Children, but... ch children, children. I believe there's a story that will make you all happy. Now, Shaul was supposed to have fought and destroyed all of the Amalekites. But he didn't, did he? No, he did not. David and his men were often traveling, but they made their home in Ziklag. Their wives, children, and belongings were all there. So when the Amalekites wanted to hurt David, that's where they attacked. They attacked women and children? Cowards! Yes, they were cowards. They attacked the, the city, taking all the belongings of David's, of David's men their wives too, and Abigail. Did he get her back? Did David go to finish off the Amalekites? Hold on, hold on. Let me finish the story. Yes, yes Rabbi. Rabbi. David and his men were returning home after many battles, but when they got to Ziklag, all of that they found was smoke and ash. Get back! Men! Men! Please! Let me pray. Let me ask God what he would have us do, why he would have allowed this. Please. Let me pray and then decide what to do with me. Lord, I don't know why you would have allowed this. I don't understand. If you've given me so much, only to take it away, and then... And then... What do you want me to do? Do you want me to go after the raiding party? Will we win? David. He said we're going to win. So we go after them. Follow me.
It's all right. We will not hurt you. Do we have anything to give her to drink? Yes, quickly, quickly. Where have you come from? I'm an Egyptian, the slave of an Amalekite. He was in a raiding party. They sacked Negev, some of the land of Judah, and they burned the plague with fire. I was too sick to walk on the way back, so three days ago he left me here to die. Do you know where they are? I do. Will you lead us to them? Swear to me before your God that you will not give me back to my master. I swear it. Then I will lead you to them. Down to the camp of the Amalekite raiders. They fought all night and into the next day, but they were successful. A few men managed to run with camels, but David and his men destroyed the others. And the battle went on for a whole day? Yes, and a night too. Was Abigail all right? We found them, all of them. Miriam! You're safe. Where's your mother? David. Abigail? I, I tried. You, you, you're all right. Thank you for coming for oh. me. Oh, thank God. He's been good to us today. Oh. David, everything we had is here. All our families. All our children, they didn't kill any of them. All our possessions, plus the plunder they took from everyone else. Every man may take what is his, and the rest will divide equally. And give some to those who helped us along the way. I missed you. We missed you too. Enter. Ziba, have you found anything out for me about Saul's family? I have, my lord. Jonathan's son, Mephibosheth, is alive. He was found living in the house of Zakir, in Lodabar, out in the wilderness. He's alive? Yes. However, his maid dropped him as a child. Well, he's lame. Both legs. Do you think that matters to me? Send for him. Tell him he's in no danger. It'll be several weeks before. Then I will receive him, let me see, after my coronation. Um, next, tell me, is the Ark of the Covenant on its way? It is, my lord. It will be here very soon. The musicians are prepared for the celebration. The high priest Zeta is ready to receive it in Jerusalem. Wonderful. Thank you, Ziba. Tell me, how are things with my house? Is everyone well? They are, my lord. Bring her to me. I miss her too. Yes, I'm <laughs> Abigail, my love, how are you? I'm well, as are the children. Good. I've been meaning to spend more time with them. But I know, so many men to lead, so many enemies of the Lord to kill. You make it sound so harsh. I don't mean to, my warrior king. I'm not king yet. I know, but you will be, and the kingly duties of your reign You will. sound just like my sister. 
I understand Joab so much better now. <laughs> oh, nephews. <laughs> I promise our family won't suffer for it. They found McCall. I was told. She's being brought back to me, I believe. She is. Away from her new husband. He cried for her openly in the streets when she left. Did she leave willingly? She did, as far as anyone could tell. She's my wife. She shouldn't have been given away. Be fair, love. She was... You were a fugitive, and her father had vowed to kill you. I know, but I made a promise to her, and it's my duty to keep it. I understand, but... She doesn't love you. Your wealth and your title, but not you. And do you love me, Abigail? You know I do. Are you writing another psalm, my love? For the priests on Sabbath, yes. You've written of the Lord's dwelling place. You are thinking about bringing the ark to Jerusalem. Yes, and I've been seeking the Lord's will for building him a temple here in Jerusalem. My love, you've been asking him about this for weeks now. Have you still heard no answer? Hmm? Even if the answer is no? It's just, I, I know that I'm a, I'm a warrior. My hands are dirtied with blood. The blood of the Lord's enemies. That may be true, but their blood is still on my head, on my hands. Will the Lord want a warrior to build him his house? I'm a man of war, not a man of peace. In your heart, you are a man of peace. Whatever God chooses for you, he has a reason. David, he has given you his answer, hasn't he? Why do you have to be so smart? Why would you try to hide what God has told you? Because I don't like it. <laughs> David. I don't have to like everything he says. I just have to listen, and, and I know he's right. He told me I'm not going to build him his house because I'm a man of war. Does he know how much I want him to have a place of his own? A, a beautiful palace, better than mine. No one is more deserving of a, of a great place than the Lord of hosts, and he told me no. I'm sorry, my love. I know you want this. But God doesn't do anything without a reason. He must have a better plan. Well, I wish he'd share it. <laughs> Haven't you written in your Psalms that God is always good? that his ways are right and pure. Love, he has called you to so many things. Don't let it destroy you that this isn't given to you. I will try. As for God, his way is always perfect.
Show me what you're working on. Well, nothing much. I'm writing about this house. Oh, Lord of hosts. How lovely that place where you dwell. So Mukhal was brought to live with the other wives of David, and the final preparations were made for David to be crowned king. And the Ark was brought to Jerusalem? Yes, it was brought to the side of the city with singing and dancing. It must have been beautiful. I wish we could see the Ark of the Covenant. I wish we could too. But only the high priest of all of Israel can see it once a year. Do you remember when? Passover, two days ago. That's right, Passover. Pesach, when the Lord reminds us that we are his children, that he will deliver us from anyone who wants to do us harm. Like the Romans? Maybe so. Do you think that the Messiah will come and destroy them all, or do you think he'll be a high priest? I think when he comes, there will be many things revealed that are hidden. I still wish you could go see the Ark of the Covenant. I could someday, maybe. I'm a Levite. Why did God choose the only Levites to be the priests? Do you want me to tell you more about King David? Or do you want me to explain the law and the Torah first? Still want to know why. Maybe next Passover, or you could ask the rabbi in your own city. You're more interesting. I wouldn't tell him that you said that. We happen to be old friends. It's okay, you can You can have your own opinions as long as you pay attention. May I continue now? Thank you. So the day drew together that all the people in Jerusalem lined the streets to see the king that they would love and the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. And as all of them lined the streets and it was brought through the center of the city, all the people sang. I dance before the Lord himself. What do I have to hide from him? 
May I be cursed if I ever forget that I am a servant to Adonai first and the king second. Why can't you be happy? Today's a day of rejoicing, and you would rather curse God? Do I look like I care? Y you will. I'm sorry. The Messiah will come from my children and my children's children. You will not be a part of it. Good. Then maybe I never have to see your face again. Go spend more time with your beloved Abigail. See what airs she can give you and your God. Today, after the ark is home, I will be crowned king over Israel, and you will stand with my wives, and you will smile. If you care so much about regal appearance, now's your chance. Are you threatening me? No. No, I, I still owe you my life. I haven't forgotten. <laughs> you loved me once. I did. I won't degrade you by asking if you still do. Do you still love me? No. Then if you never want to see my face again, I'll keep it from you. I won't cause you pain. You would hide me away from you in the house of your wives, kept in comfort all my days and never having to see you again? Is that what you want? Yes. And so be it. I was happy. Before you called me back here, I was happy. All you've done is ruin me. After you betrayed my father, after you took me away from Palti, he loved me. Did you love him? <laughs> no, but I was happy. I had money, I had... So everything. that's what you care about. <laughs> you will live out the rest of your days in comfort and in peace. You will be provided for, and taken care of, and I will never speak to you again. <laughs> then go out to your people. Make a fool of yourself. Go honor your God in all you do. And know I hate you for everything you've done or will do.
Hadassah, share. I am sharing. Children, children. Now, now, there's no need to be ashamed. But try to listen without fighting. God values kindness. But she's been me. Do you think that that matters? Well, yes. Do you think kindness would mean as much as it does if it was given to those who deserve it? Isn't that the same thing as mercy? Not exactly. Mercy would be deciding to not give someone a punishment they deserve. Kindness would be knowing someone did wrong, but treating them well anyways. They're close, and, kind, and mercy is certainly kind. But sometimes kindness means punishing sin as well as God does with us. I don't think I like that. Oh, but child, do you believe God loves you? I do. He calls all the children of Israel his chosen ones. He says he loves us many times in many ways. Yes, and do you believe him? Yes, I do believe him. And are his ways good? Yes. Then you, my child, have nothing to fear from him. He demands great respect, but you do not need to be terrified of him. Well, what if I say really, really, really bad? God has the power to forgive you your sins, as long as you do what you need to atone for them. Is it everything to do without atonement? Oh, no, it cannot, my child. Though the prophets say that when the Messiah comes, he will bring the atonement for us, and we will be closer to God than ever before, without the barrier between us. I hope the Messiah comes soon. Me too. Won't he be from David's family? Yes, he will. David was far from a perfect king. But he was a righteous man, a man that God called a man after God's own heart. A very special title, wouldn't you say? Well. Ziba came to David and told him that they found Mephibosheth in the marketplace and that he had been brought to the palace. Ziba, what is it? Mephibosheth is here, my lord king. He's ready to be brought before you. Bring him here. I will do so immediately. My lord king, it is as we feared, and he's lame in both legs. Do you think that matters to me when he's the son of my brother? Bring him here. Let me give him whatever he needs. Tell him no harm will come to him. Please, send for him. Yes, my lord king.
What is your servant that you, my lord king, should notice a dog like me? I have given you everything that belonged to Saul and his family. You and your sons and your servants can plow his land and harvest crops, and you, Mephibosheth, son of Jonathan, son of Saul, former king of Israel, will always eat at my table as one of my own sons. Why are you doing this? I made a promise to your father. May Jehovah go between your children and my children forever. I'm just a cripple, my lord. Lame since I was just a baby. I don't deserve to sit in the presence of a king. For I am the son of your enemy's son. Everyone the king chooses is worthy to sit at his table. I make you worthy by my promise. You are no longer the son of my enemy. I claim you as my own. I will never leave you to run and hide away from me again. There is no need. You are safe. My lord, king. Quickly, bring a chair or, or a cushion for him to lie on. There. Bring this man new clothes, food, and whatever he wants. Whatever you need, it's yours. You are most welcome here. I've already prepared a place for you, and I've taken special care for you and servants to attend to whatever you need. I have no way to repay you for this kindness. I'm already repaying a debt I owe to your father. You, you need do nothing. This is a gift. Ziba, you will oversee the farming of Mephibosheth's land. Uh, you will remain here to serve me, but this will be added to your duties. See that it is tended to and kept well for my son. Thank you, my Lord King. Thank you. Mephibosheth all his days. Mephibosheth is a very long name. Yes, it is. But a decent enough name, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Did David go to war again? Yes, he did. He fought alongside his mighty men and his nephews, Joab and Abishai. But during peace times, they would return home. Abigail? <laughs> Abigail. When you go to war again, I miss having you here. I should leave by the end of the week. Should? Abigail? 
My good father. That's a sudden question. Well, am I? For a king. You would think that by now I know that you really will give me honest answers. <laughs> oh, you'll always be David Ben Jesse, the warrior poet runaway to me first. How flattering. <laughs> There's just so much you must do. A kingdom to defend, a Joab to keep under control. Abishai. Abishai's worse. Oh, I know. Your sister and I talk fairly often. Oh, good. She's told you all my secrets, then. Most of them, yes. Well, am I a good father? You are. But most of your children barely know you, and you barely know them. They need to know you, too. And it's true, some of them need you more than others. Did you know Absalom has been starting to flirt with some of the servant girls? He's ten. Do you think that stops most boys? And that poor thing is so handsome with that gorgeous hair of his that the girls are already practically throwing themselves at his feet. And then Amnon has been getting more aggressive, especially towards Tamar and Absalom. It's almost time for him to have his own place in the palace. Soon. Adonijah is getting much better at military strategy, and I know he would love to learn from you. I'll find the time. And I miss you. I know, I know. I'm just busy. There's war, there's funds for Israel, keeping a stable nation is hard work. I said, I miss you. I miss you too. The kings are supposed to go to war with their men. What kind of a king would I be if I stayed home? I guess I don't... Uh, oh, I'll stay. I'm needed here. I see that. I didn't say you had to. I know. You didn't even ask. But I'll stay. I'm needed here. Sometimes I have to be a father. I'm glad to hear you say that. Zeba, watch over things for a little while. <laughs> Yes, my king. Amnon, stop hitting your brother, Absalom. You two. He started it. Behave, you two. Go fight one of my guards. I'm sure he'd be happy to teach you. And Lord King. Yes? You have another daughter. Wonderful. Another daughter. The mother wishes to see you and for you to meet the child. I will do so soon. Thank you. Take care of her. Dress. But I had it first this morning. It doesn't even fit you right. Girls, will you please stop shouting at each other? I'm sure it'll be okay. Stop it, Tamar. You're, you're not, not helping. helping. Girls, stop it. But father, she stole my dress. No, it wasn't. It was, no, I didn't. It was laying right there. They won't stop shouting at each other. And well, it's my dress. dress. Girls, uh, you can all have new dresses. Does that settle it? Yes. yes. Are you all right, Father? I'm just tired, Shell Abba. Go play with your sisters, your other sisters, if those two are bothering you. Are you sure you'll be all right without me? Of course I will, sweetheart. I just have a headache. I'll go up to the balcony and get some fresh air. How does that sound? Would that ease your heart for me? It would. Ziba.
Who is that woman? Well, considering that it's Uriah the Hittite's house, one of your mighty warriors, I would assume this is his wife, Bathsheba. I have heard her beauty described before, and the man spoke truly. I want to meet her. My king? You heard me. I would like to meet her. While her husband is away at war? Yes. Bring her to me. And her maid? No, her alone. I wish to speak with her. My lord king, please reconsider. No, bring her to me as she is. Yes, my lord king. May I help you, sir? I'm here to speak with your lady, Bathsheba. What is it? My lady, I, I'm terribly sorry. <clears throat> I come from my lord, King David. He sends his servant to ask that you come to the palace today, right away. He, he noticed you here on the roof. I, he noticed me? I'm in the middle of my ceremonial cleansing. I... It isn't a request, my lady. Shiva, you cannot go. The king... The king is an honorable man. His intentions must be honorable. Perhaps to tell me of some great service of my husband's. He requests your presence immediately, my lady. Samara, get my cloak. Yes, my lady. My lady, I... I... How can the king ask this of me? I cannot refuse him, can I? Please, do not send word of this to my beloved. Do not send him word. <laughs> do not break his trust in his friend, the king. My lady. No, don't, please. You must swear this to me, if you love me. I do, I do swear it. I'm ready. Follow me, my lady. Bathsheba is here, my lord king. Come, closer. My king, I beg you, do not wrong me. I will not wrong you, Bathsheba. I am the king. A letter, my lord king. It's from Bathsheba. Oh. Oh, God, what have I done? My king? She's pregnant.
her husband, Uriah. He's been away for months. There's, there's no way. Uh, send word to him. Uh, tell him that he has earned the favor of the king, that he should come home to rest for a while. My king? Do it. We may still have a chance. She can claim the child is his and no more needs to be said about any of this. Write to him immediately. Yes, my lord king. Uriah, my brother. Good to see you. Come, have a drink with me. My king, I am honored by you, though I know not why. For your distinguished service towards me for many, many years. I consider you a good friend. Here I am at home, enjoying my life while you are out to war. Go home for a few days, rest. Spend time with your wife. My lord king, my friend. The ark and the men of Israel and Judah are staying in tents, and my commander Joab and my lord's men are camped in open country. How could I go to my house and eat and drink and be with my wife? As surely as you live, I will not do such a thing. Then only stay the night, and I will send you back right away in the morning. Here, more to drink. Please, drink. Come, tell me, how is the war going? My lord king, Uriah did not return home last night, and he has gone back toward the camp again this morning. No! No, no, no. Send word to Joab. In this letter write, put Uriah out in front, then draw back so that he will be struck down and killed. You heard me! Yes, my lord king. Done. The letter has been sent to Joab. Start preparing a room for Bathsheba. I won't leave her alone now. She'll come live here. Yes, my lord king. They overpowered us! We had to go too close to the wall! Abimelech is dead! Hundreds of men are dead! From archers and... Oh yes, Uriah is dead too! And it cost you dearly for it! Those men were my friends! My brothers! And I know what you're doing! Joab, men die in war! 
The sword delivers as well as it attacks. Keep going forward and take the city now. I trust you. You may trust me to execute your orders, my king. At least this time you were given orders. Oh, and... Hey! I love hey. She begged to come see you, refusing to stay home. What have you done? I've done nothing. I'm the king. I'm going to take care of you now, once your mourning is over. Go home. I will send you anything you need. Are you challenging me? No. I'm out there fighting a war. Your war with your men. At least what's left of them. So then it said to her, of course, Abraham was the smartest man in the scriptures. I mean, he knew a lot. <laughs> Come on, that is better than yours last week about Adam. Must I remind you which one of us had an interview with a girl's father? You promised not to bring that up again. You just brought it up. No, I didn't. Yeah, that was you. I'm not going to talk to you. So, she didn't get the joke, so I tried explaining. Abraham, relative to Lot, he knew a lot. Nobody would get that joke. Wait, who's that? He looks like a Nazarite from the hills. Nathan the prophet, what can we do for you, sir? I'm going to see the king immediately. I have a message from the Most High God. Of course, Mr. Prophet. Of course. What? My king, I have a message from the Lord. Oh, wonderful. Here, have a seat. I've been working on a few new songs for the trumpets lately. Maybe you can have a look at those later. Tell me, what do you think David. about... I'm sorry. Of course. Continue. There were two men in a certain town, one rich and the other poor. The rich man had many sheep and cattle, but the poor man had nothing but a little ewe lamb he had bought. He raised it, and it grew up with him and his children. It shared his food, drank from his cup, and even slept in his arms. It was very precious to him. Now, a visitor came to the rich man, but the rich man didn't take from his own cheaper cattle to feed this man. Instead, he took the little ewe lamb that belonged to the poor man and gave it to the one who had come to him. Who could do this? As surely as the Lord lives, whoever did this must die. He must pay for the lamb four times over because he did such a terrible thing. David, you are that man. This is what the Lord, God of Israel, says. I anointed you king over Israel. I delivered you from the hand of Saul. I gave you your master's house to you, your master's wives. I gave you Israel, Judah, and if all this had been too little, I would have given you even more. Why did you do what is so evil in his eyes by despising the word of the Lord? You had your eyes struck down by the sword and took his wife to be your own. Now because of this, war will always be with your house. I have sinned against the name of the Lord. The Lord has taken away your sin. You are forgiven. He won't let you be killed, but because doing this terrible thing has thrown such hatred for the ways of the Lord, the son Bathsheba gave to you will die. No. 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 Please. No. Please. Let me be struck down. Spare the child. Spare his mother. Don't let them pay for what is my sin. David. My lord king. Yes? Your son, the child of Bathsheba, is ill. It happened so suddenly. The doctors are already on their way. No. Do all you can for him and, and, and I will pray. Yes, my lord king.
No! 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 <laughs> In my time of trouble, I am seeking you, Lord God. My soul is running in the night without stopping. My soul can't be comforted. I remember my God when I'm troubled, but my spirit is overwhelmed. You hold my eyes awake so I can't sleep, and I'm so... No! 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 I am searching my own heart. But my God, will you ever show me your favor again? Will you fail your promises to me? In your just anger, will you shut away your tender mercies for me? These thoughts are my weakness. But I will remember the years at the right hand of the Most High. I will remember your works and your wonders, O Lord. Your way, O God, is a refuge. There is no one like you. No one is as great as you. Lord, remember your servant David. I beg you, do not take away my son. Tell him. He's been like this for a week. I'm, I'm afraid he might, he might harm himself. We have to tell him it's his son. But I won't endanger him like Is that. Is my child dead? Yes, my Lord King, he is. Have clean clothes brought for me and food. I will eat again. My Lord King, I, I don't understand why you're acting this way. While the child was ill, you, you wept and prayed and, and fasted, but now that he's dead, you get up and you wish to eat? While the child was alive, I fasted and prayed, hoped that the Lord would be merciful and let the child live. But I cannot bring him back now. He will not return to me. But I will go to him someday. I'm sorry. I am so sorry. I have deeply wronged you, and you have to pay the punishment for my sin, not yours. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. God killed and paid the child. Oh, my sweet girl. 
God is rarely ever so harsh with his children. But David was a king, and from his line someday we will get the Messiah. It just seems so harsh. For David, not for the child. The child got to go be with the Lord, and that's not a bad fate. Right. Yes, child? My baby sister died when she was very small. Is it because my parents did something wrong? Did I do something wrong? Did I make God angry with me? No, sweet girl, no. We live in a broken world. And though God uses every trial, every hardship, for his own glory in the end, he is not cruel. But he punished David, sir. That was a very specific situation. It's very rare for him to deal so harshly with his children. But David was a king, so he was held at a higher standard. But Mama cries so much. He doesn't feel like love. Why would he allow this to happen? I can't answer what God is thinking. If I could, I'd be much more than a rabbi. But I can tell you this. When we feel at our lowest, when we feel like we have no hope and there's no reason to go on, that is when God works, when his hand is shown abundantly clear, especially, especially through his word. But that doesn't make the pain stop. No, no it doesn't. But that pain turns to hope. That hope turns to strength and trust. Even if it takes a very, very long time, there is hope, I promise. There is hope here too. See, David loved Bathsheba. She gave him many children, one of them a son. You might recognize the name of this one. Good to see you. I brought some things to cheer you up. What <laughs> lovely gifts. Thank you, my friend. Zamira told Anath that you were sad today, so I would have come sooner, but the children were. <laughs> it's all right. I understand. How is Solomon? He is well. I'm about to go see him before his bedtime. You are a very good mother. Thank you. What's the matter? It's nothing. Tell me. I want so badly to give him all I can, all the wisdom I have, all the love I have. And I don't hate David, not anymore. He's proved himself from our first meeting, but I can't help but think. I never had children with Uriah, and he would have liked Solomon very much. I know he would. You're right, he would have. Mama, do you love David? Not like you do. I can't. I'm happy here. After nearly six years, I'm happy here. Is that what you wanted to know? David is a good man. Not a perfect man, but a good man. I see that. Now, My lady, may I speak? Of course. You are no more a servant than my own mother could be. My lady, it's all right if you love David differently than you loved Uriah. No two men are alike, my sweet Ahuva. Shiva, I've known you your whole life, and I've seen your wisdom and your kindness. And now these past years, I've seen you sit here for hours upon hours. Your grief is understandable. But perhaps, perhaps what meant, men meant for evil, God has intended for good. We can't change the past, and I know it doesn't take the pain away to say it. It can't. But no, you are a kind and a wise woman, and you have so much to teach young Solomon. He is blessed, truly, to have you as his mother. Thank you, my friend, for your words. 
Mishta al Hamun Hamot. Blessed be those who fear the wisdom. If I have your wisdom, you will always guide me. Amen. That's a good prayer, Solomon. I believe. And how is my strong young man this fine evening? Sleepy. Oh, and why are you sleepy? Because I stayed up late to pray so I could be a good king like you. I hope that you are a much better king than me. That's impossible. I'm a uh, and how's my baby boy? I'm alive. I'm not a baby anymore. <laughs> I know. Not to anyone but your mother anyway. And your father. Abba Lee was teaching me how to be a good king like him. Oh? And what did he tell you? Well... We hadn't really gotten that far yet. Oh, I see. You know, I have a few ideas on what would make a very, very good king. What, Mama? 
Speak up for those who cannot speak up for themselves, for the rights of all who are alone. Speak up and judge fairly. Defend the rights of the poor and needy. And when you find a wife, make sure she is a woman with a noble character. A woman like that will bring you good and not harm all the days of your life. A beautiful face goes away, but a woman who fears the Lord is worthy to be praised. Honor her for all her hands have done, and let the people praise her too. That's how to be a good and noble king, my little prince. And David became a better father? In some ways, yes. In some ways? He was a better father to his newer, younger children, especially Solomon. But some of his older children were still troubled. Many of them did not get along with each other. I don't get along with my sisters. And that is fairly normal at your age. But even though they were David's children, they were not young. I'm still going to be enemies with my sisters when I'm older. They're annoying. Yes, but would you hurt any of them? No, and if anyone else did, I beat them up a lot. Can I help? You're only saying that because you like me. I do not. Yes, you do. do. I do not. Children, please. I'm glad none of you would hurt your sisters. Did David's children hurt each other? I wish I could say that they didn't, my daughter, but, but they did. He didn't say that, did he? Look, he says he did. Well, I'd tell you not to listen to any of his advice, but I suppose you don't have to try very hard to find a girl who likes you. What with your incredibly jealousy-inducingly gorgeous hair and ready wit. I still have standards, sister. Oh yes, of course you do. Very, very, very high standards. I mean, you're going to have to find a girl with hair at least as beautiful as yours is. Otherwise, it just wouldn't be fair. Do you want me to be a bachelor of all my days? <laughs> going somewhere? Yes, I'm going to see our half-brother Amnon. Apparently, he's been sick, and only my cooking is able to make him feel better. Oh, be nice, he's not so bad. You, on the other hand. Okay, if you say so. I say so. Will you come back later for the continuing misadventures of our gallant hero? I wouldn't miss it. My Lord Absalom? Uh, yes? Are you still wanting to go hunting today, my Lord? That was today. I completely forgot. I'd still like to go. Would you like me to tie up your hair, my Lord Absalom? No. Absolutely not. Oh, I... I'm sorry, my Lord. Go get the hunters. attacked me. Don't tell father. He won't do anything about it. You don't think he would? He doesn't love us. But Absalom, that's not true. What's going to happen to me? What's going to happen to Amnon? I'll handle Amnon. And I'll take care of you. No one will ever hurt you again. <laughs>
My Lord Keen, I have urgent news. What is it? Your son Absalom, who invited all of your sons to a feast, he's killed them, all of them. Oh, only Amnon is dead, David. Absalom targeted him directly. He's openly declared war against you, my king. I'd like to give him a haircut he'll never forget. Abishai! Why? Why has he done this terrible thing? Why? What has Amnon done to him? Not to him. I'm sorry, my king. I couldn't find that out sooner. Amnon attacked Tamar, Absalom's favorite sister. Months ago now. He must have been planning this. Where is Tamar now? Away in Absalom's house. She keeps to herself. In the name of the Lord, bring her to me, quickly. Absalom is already gathering an army. He's requested I go and meet with him. I'm not going. Knowing him, he'll find a way to make you. I doubt that. Why didn't Tamar tell me? I should have seen it in Amnon. He's always been aggressive. He's always... <sighs> Leave us. Shell Abba. Shall Abba, why didn't you come to me? How can you still love me? My child, my love has nothing to do with any shame you feel. Shame has no place in love. I don't deserve to come before you. I tried to get away, I tried to call for help, no one... It's all right. Absalom is angry. He's angry at you, angry at Amnon, angry at any injustice he can find. He scares me. I don't know what he's planning to do, but I know it will be desperate. He accused you of not loving us, your own children. Do you believe that? No, Abba. But you must be careful. Absalom is dangerous. He wants war, doesn't he? Yes, Abba. I don't, I don't want to bring him war. He, he doesn't know what war means, not like I do. He doesn't want war. Hallel? Hallel, remind Joab that he is not to harm my son. It's not just going to be okay, is it, Abba? I don't know, but I do know that the Lord is good, always. My Lord King. Absalom has just been declared king in Hebron. My lord Joab, the king sends me to remind you, again, not to kill his son, and... And? Say it! Joab, I received word that in your refusal to see him... Spit it out! Absalom has burned all of your barley fields. What did you say? He's burned your barley... What? I said... I heard what you said. Tell that little sheep's friend that I'll meet him, tonight! And if he brings anyone other than himself, I'll forget the king's orders. Is that clear? I said, is that clear? Yes, my lord, Joab. But the king told you not to kill his son. Well, he'll be lucky if I don't.
And what do you want? I've been talking to the people of this country while my father has been too busy stealing other men's wives. How dare you! The people love me, not my father. You've heard the talking in the streets, haven't you? Maybe. You don't have to lie to me, Joab. My father's loyal dog. <laughs> Woof. Very funny. The people want me, a true king, not him. Your hair has gone into your brain. Again, very funny. I will make sure to remember that when I'm king over all of Israel. What you're doing here is wrong. What I'm doing is saving my people from my own father's tyranny. Why'd you want me here? I want you to tell my father to leave Jerusalem immediately. I need to move in my life. <laughs> do you actually think that yes! I'm- Yes! Yes, I do! Now go. Did Absalom really hate David that much? Sadly, yes. That's sad. It is. Hatred is very powerful. But I understand why he is angry. He thought David wanted to help his sister. But was he right? Well, no. But that's what he thought. So he wasn't thinking the truth? I guess he wasn't. It's easy to not think the truth when you're angry. That's very wise. It's very hard to see the truth when you are angry and terrified. And Absalom was both. He built himself up in his mind as this noble, powerful king. But a noble king wouldn't hurt his own father. Even, especially when David had done nothing wrong. He loved him. That's right. David loved Tamar, and he loved Absalom too. He loved him very much, and it hurt him a lot that they would go against him like this. What's wrong, Lydia? It's just sad, and Job is so angry. He's not going to listen to David, is he? Well... And what did he say? We have to go. The people are on his side. He's right. You really do lack friends in the city right now. Come, all of you. We must flee or none of us will escape Absalom. We must leave quickly or he will overtake us and the city with his sword. Your servants are ready to do whatever our lord the king chooses. Itai, you need to stay here. You're in exile from your homeland. I can't make you wander around with us. As surely as the lord lives and as you, my lord, the king live. Wherever you go, I will go. If it means life or death, I will go. Then we march on. Murderer! You scoundrel! The Lord has finally repaid you for all the blood you shed in the house of Saul! The Lord has given away your kingdom to your son because you're a murderer! Go! Get out! Who does this dead dog think he is, David? Let me go cut off his head! Let me cut it off! What does this have to do with you, Abishai? Who made you my advisor? If the Lord said to him, curse David, who can say, why do you do this? Leave this man alone. Let him curse. It may be that the Lord will look on me and restore me instead of this man's curse today. Yes! Go! Go, you pathetic king! Go, you murderer! I still think I should cut off his head. Abishai. What? My Lord King, I bring news for you, as well as food for you and your house. I brought 200 loaves of bread, 100 clusters of grapes, 100 pieces of fruit, and one jar of wine for you, my king. That's for you, Abishai. Thank you for your kindness. I must know, where is Mephibosheth? My king, I'm afraid I don't bear good news. You see, Mephibosheth has said to me, 
Let me stay in Jerusalem, so that the kingdom of my father might be returned to me. And so I fled. Thank you for your information. In return, take all of the land and belongings of Mephibosheth for yourself. They're yours. Thank you, my lord king. And may I always find such favor in your sight. Take the city? Yes. Did he hold the city? Yes. Did we really have to run away? Yes, he did. And did Abishai get to kill Shimei? <sighs> but David told him not to. Yeah. Is Abishai your favorite character? Yeah. Boy. Hey! <clears throat> Sorry, Sorry. Sorry. May I continue now? Do you want to hear what happens next? Yes, Rabbi, but. Absalom took the throne and David just kept on running away. Can we skip to the part where David gets the throne back? Well, you miss a lot of the story that way. Well, okay. I, I can sum it up a bit. So, Absalom ended up with a bad advisor who gave him, oh, bad advice. He didn't take the advice of his wiser advisor. <laughs> and it's a good thing that he didn't, because if he did, David might not have gotten the throne back. But Absalom heard about where David was hiding. And so he planned an attack in the forest of Ephraim. Well, I remember this part. Absalom got stuck. Stuck? Yeah, Absalom was riding his mule and his hair got stuck in the branches. No, he did get stuck. You're right, Titsack. Caught and stuck. But with the Lord's help, David's men won that day. But many, many lives were lost. Lord, I don't understand why you're doing this. My son, my beloved son is betraying me. Have I been a good father? I haven't done everything I could do. I, I've been away, I've been distracted, I've been... <sighs> Lord, I can hardly ask you anything, but please, please let my son have survived this battle. Please, but in the end, let not my will, but yours be done. What do you have to report to me? The kingdom is ours. We are terribly outnumbered by the soldiers of your enemies, but the kingdom is ours. And my son? The Lord has given you victory over today and all who have fought against you. And my son? May the enemies of my Lord and all who come to hurt you end up like him. No. No, my son Absalom. Absalom, if only I had died instead of you, my son. No. Get up, David. Don't humiliate all your men. They saved your lives and lives of your wives and your sons and your daughters and all of your people. You hate those who love you and love those who hate you. Do the commanders of your army mean nothing to you? Would you rather Absalom, the traitor, be alive and the rest of us dead? Go out there and encourage your men, or this battle will be worse for you than anything you've ever lived through before. Did you kill him? I did. Your people need you, my king. I will go and see my men, and then we will return to Jerusalem. My lord king, the battle counts have returned. Your enemy has suffered a loss of 20,000 men. Those men were my men too, and my son. I can't rejoice today. David, when the count was taken, while well, your men fought bravely, the battle wasn't won by us. Your enemies dead were killed by the bogs, branches, soft ground, and wild beasts that attacked only the soldiers of your enemies. Today, the Lord fought with us. Is that the end of the story, Rabbi? Oh, no. 
there is much, much more to the story of King David. See, David kept on fighting battles against the enemies of the Lord. He had strong sons and daughters and built a legacy that has lasted all these years. David was a man of music, a man of war, but most of all, a man of God. Did he tell all that to Solomon too? Yes, he did. My Lord has returned. Praise Adonai for your safety, my king. Why didn't you come with me? I wanted to, but when I asked our servant Ziba to saddle a donkey for me to follow you, he betrayed me and left me. Is that so? My Lord King, please, don't remember how I cursed you the day you were leaving Jerusalem. For look, I come today as the first of the tribe of Joseph to greet you, my King. What does this have to do with you, you sons of Zariah? What right do you have to interfere with the justice of a king? Don't you know that today I am again king over Israel? Today is the day for rejoicing, and I will have no one killed. Shimei, go in peace. I have spared your life, I swear it. Thank you, my king. And for you? I don't deserve any of your mercy, but I could not even follow you, even though I tried. It's not true. Yes, you take it to Absalom. Solomon. I order that you both divide the land. Thank you, my Lord King, but I don't need anything. Just knowing you've returned safely fills my heart with enough joy. Give the land to Ziba, for I don't need it. What do you think, my son? Who should have Saul's land? David lived to be very old. Fairly old, yes. As old as you? <laughs> yes, Lydia, as old as me. I don't want David to die. Oh, but what a blessing for him to go be with the Lord of hosts that he loved so very much. But did David write the Psalms until he died? Absolutely. He had a messenger take them to the tabernacle for him. They were played and sung in the tabernacle and also in the Temple of Solomon, which Solomon built after David had died. My favorite is Psalm 117. Because it's short. No, because it's so happy. Praise the Lord, all the nations and all the people. Praise the Lord for all that he has done. Praise the Lord. That's a very good song, Zach. I'm so glad we still get to be the we wrote. So am I, Adasa. So am I. My son. Yes, I'm here. I am about to go the way of this earth. So be strong. Show yourself to be a man. Do as the Lord your God tells you. Walk in all his ways. Keep his laws and his word. Then the Lord will keep his promise to me. He said, your sons must be careful of their way. To walk before me in truth with all of their heart all their soul. And if they do, you will never fail to have a man on the throne of Israel. I swear it, Abba. Call on your mother, Bathsheba, and Abigail. Take it to Zadok at the tabernacle for me. Oh, Lord. 
Zion, may he rule in the midst of his enemies. The Lord has said to my Lord, come sit at my right hand. That means he was a man of God with a heart, wasn't he, Rabbi? Yes, he was. That's better to be a man with a heart of peace than a heart of war, right? Yes, it is. Rabbi, hmm? Will the Messiah really be from the line of David? The Lord says so, and I believe him. Will he be here soon? I wish I knew. Now you all need to go find your parents. It's getting rather late. Oh. <sighs> 
Oh, Yeshua, you're still here. You know, I don't believe I've heard you speak all afternoon. Is there anything I can help you with? Rabbi, if the Messiah will be a man who has come from the line of David, why does David call him my Lord in the Psalms? Yeshua, where have you been? Mary, Joseph. Yes, he's been sitting here listening to me ramble on about King David all afternoon. You know, he's a very intelligent young man. I've been answering the questions of children all afternoon, but not one of them has left me speeches like your son's question. I'm rather impressed. Yeah, he's a wonderful child. We were looking everywhere for you, my son. Where have you been? Did you not know how it would be about my father's business? We certainly hope you enjoyed that. Uh, it sounds like you did. Um, it is tag tradition and very important to us that our cast will not be coming out to bow tonight because we don't want you to make the mistake of thinking that this is about us. This isn't about us. This is about our savior who you were just introduced to, actually. Uh, all of our cast members will be out in the marketplace to talk to you, to talk to you about the show, to talk to you about what you just saw, because all of us were incredibly excited to be a part of it. Um, like I said, this was an original show. This is Tag's second original show. Um, and I thank you for everything that you guys have done for coming to the show. You help support this theater and what we do with uh, all of these teenagers. We use theater as a ministry to help people and help teens and help young people to have a place to belong and a place to work with other people to make good friendships and to make good friendships with, pe with their peers and also to be mentored by godly and loving adults who can help them as they struggle through what some of us have already been through. <laughs> so um, I thank you so much for supporting us and I hope you tell all of your friends. This show was live streamed. That will be available for other people to watch. We had uh, a ton of people watch it in multiple countries, we found out, which is quite exciting. So the show has gone international today and uh, we praise God for that. There is another show tomorrow at 2 o'clock. Tell all your friends, tell all your family, and we'll see you there. Thank you. Bye.